I hear you, Sergeant. What's your status? Status is chafed, sir. You say chafed, Sergeant? Yes, sir. A local airborne insurgency has infiltrated the U.S. zone designated as my pants. Sir. <laughs> Shut up, jackass. It's easy to look at a game like Spec Ops The Line and cast it aside without a second thought. Let's be honest, a cover shooter involving a squad of military commandos blasting their way through cities nothing new. In previous Spec Ops games have been less than stellar military adaptations. The newest installment looks to stand out amongst the saturated third-person market with dynamic terrain and a story inspired by Joseph Conrad's Heart of Darkness. Does Spec Ops hold the line or become overwhelmed by mediocrity? Rumor is Conrad was ordered to abandon the city. He defied that order and the 33rd stood with him. The city of Dubai has been ravaged by sandstorms because someone put a city in the desert, and the military battalion known as the 33rd refused orders to evacuate. You assume the role of Martin Walker, leader of Delta Team, sent in to investigate. You begin the game expecting a typical military B-movie plotline, but each chapter does away with the glorification of war in exchange for a grittier and more emotional game. The piles of bodies and remnants of the execution line cause your once-confident squad to become a shell of their former selves. Sure, it's ironic you get ammo for curb stomping a guy in the face, but it's a welcome departure to see squad members affected by the bodies they leave in their wake, and the psychological head games that follow keep you guessing as to how this grim situation can resolve itself. That's white phosphorus. Yeah, I know what it is. You've seen what this shit does. You know we, we can't might not use have a choice, Lugo. There's always a choice. No, there's really not. Propelling the story forward is a superb presentation. The wasteland of a once prosperous Dubai holds glistening skyscrapers, sand-riddled courtyards, and now vacant office buildings. The chapters remain fresh, with few repeating corridors and solid use of lighting in the environments. The polish shows not only in the world around you, but the sharp character models and motion capture featured in the cutscenes. Audio is slick, with bass-inducing bullet fire that turns each firefight into a symphony of bullet casings. Despite Nolan North heading up yet another lead role in a video game, both he and the rest of the cast also managed to deliver some real power to each cinematic sequence. We're in the middle of a fucking war zone, and you're fighting in the dirt like a couple of goddamn kids! You are Delta operators. Fucking act like it! While the narrative is compelling, the actual gameplay stays close to the norm. Typical cover-to-cover -cover combat will be the bulk of your venture, featuring pop-in, pop-out gunplay, and the expected arsenal of automatic weapons. The cover system works well enough to do its job, but lacks that refinement and accuracy in transitioning from one piece of cover to the next. The typical combat is broken up with a mix of stealth, morally ambiguous choices, and on-rail sequences. Despite these variations in a vast backdrop, you cannot help but feel claustrophobic in the pressured direction the game pushes you. Enemy AI holds up well enough by flushing you out with grenades and flanking your positions, but both enemies and friendlies tend to become vacant and predictable in their movements. Son of a bitch! Spec Ops boasts a dynamic environment to keep things from getting stale. At certain moments, you're able to shoot out vents or cracked glass to send a wave of sand to take out a group of enemies. These are satisfying at first, but soon lose their luster in their expected use. Sure, it takes out a group of enemies or stuns troops behind cover, but it fails to really achieve that desired feeling of entering a battlefield with multiple strategies or approaches. There's also segments where a storm will roll in, obscuring your view and decreasing your overall accuracy. But these are subjected to scripted events for an enjoyable, but brief, occurrence. Three soldiers against a fat ass with an iPod. I'm less than worried. In addition to a single player campaign, there's a fairly fleshed out competitive multiplayer. Six game types throw in the typical mix of objective based gameplay and classic deathmatch. Each stage is able to offer that variety missed with the campaign as a slew of sand traps litter the battlefield, and random sandstorms roll in to obscure your view. It's an interesting mix of environmental hazards to add to the cover to cover shootouts, but the flaws with the cover system shine brightest when attempting to avoid the fast paced gunplay of a human player. Equipment loadouts are also available with weapons and perks that slowly unlock as you gain experience. With this system, the higher level players will have a clear advantage with a larger weapon variety and even body armor to decrease damage taken. The multiplayer can be fun to mess around in, but there's a lot of content locked out to new players at the start, and the objective-based mode lobbies feel all too much like the abandoned desert I wish to play on.
Spec Ops The Line has its downfalls, but it ends up being a surprisingly enjoyable experience. The compelling narrative allows the minor faults within the game to take a back seat, and the twist ending, varying morality choices, and hidden collectibles will warrant a second playthrough for additional closure. It may not break any new ground in gameplay, but it provides a welcome step up in overall presentation for a military shooter. If you're a fan of the cover shooter genre, this may just be a line worth crossing. Ah, oh, jeez. Where's all this 